Welcome to WXTV, your online source for weatherization training. This is our first in-depth look at infrared or IR. Thermography is certainly not a new technology for assessing building condition. Some weatherization crews have been using IR cameras since the mid-80s. I'm doing my IR! Whatever. But IR has come a long way since then. Cameras are smaller, lighter, easier to use, and more sensitive. In this episode, we'll team up with John Snell, a level three Jedi master of IR who's been training people in this technology for almost 30 years. We've just spent the day with some weatherization crews here in Vermont and we saw a number of instances where the air leakage was indirect through ceiling sections or down knee walls and across uh, floors. So having something like an infrared camera allows you to really speed up your understanding of air leakage and, and be more accurate over just using a smoke pencil or um, you know cutting holes or whatever. Uh, it's a tool that works really well in conjunction with other tools in particular the blower door. You have to use it with the blower door in any building you're in. But there's some basic conditions we need to be successful with this. We have to obviously have a temperature difference between inside and out. Today it's about uh, 40, 44 degrees outside. I'm assuming inside it's about 70. So we have a pretty nice temperature difference. Part of what we're doing is finding the insulation. So we got one here. This is a doozy. Uh, you don't oftentimes see buildings this badly insulated, but uh, all of the light pink areas are voids. It looks like just they use the poor technique here of uh, maybe two hole, hole blowing or something. I'm not sure. We'll have to find out. And then the other part is to find the air leakage. And we'd be on the inside with a blower door, depressurized, and we'd be looking for, in this case, cold air uh, being sucked into the building. So this is a kind of a crazy work site we're in. They're doing lead safe inside the building because of the back plastered walls. So there's not much room in here, but one of the cool things about thermography is that you can actually see through thin film plastic. So I'm able to shoot right through these uh, temporary plastic walls that they put up to contain the lead dust. And uh, we can see that these walls are uninsulated over here. They're gonna be working on those from the inside because it's double lath and plaster. There's a good example of, you can see one, two, three framing members right there where to plumb and probe that would be a bit more challenging. Uh, not that these guys can't do it, but this is a way to confirm that. Ideally, you want at least an 18 degree Fahrenheit temperature difference inside to out. That'll allow you to see the framing members. And once you've seen the framing members, then you're going to compare whatever's in between those uh, to the framing member. With the newer uh, systems that we're using today, you pr and some, some time on the camera and some skill, you can get used to doing it with less than that. And that can be in either direction. It can be cold outside or warm outside. Usually not. Uh, you can get by typically with much less of a delta T, somewhere even as low as five degrees Fahrenheit. You're using the blower door, of course, to de typically depressurize. So you're pulling that cold air through the little cracks and it shows up quite easily. 
so they've been installing cellulose in here on the inside and we can see in that corner that those cold areas are actually insulated and what we're seeing is the cold insulation having been blown in there. So we can see that those uh, bays are fully insulated. The one now in the center under the crosshair uh, has warmed up enough that it uh, is beginning to show differently. But we can, this is a quick way to get a confirmation that the cellulose is in place. So this wall just around the corner is uninsulated and uh, um, we, we can see that we have about a, about a 20 degree delta T today, although the house has been opened up enough that it's, uh, it's not quite as cold as I'd like it to be. Uh, but, you know, we can still work. If necessary, we can pump the heat up or down south, turn the air conditioning on. And like I said, we went all the way down and I was unobstructed all the way down except for one of these bays in here. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a good example of how you can use it to see an obstruction. You got to get access into it to, to same, really evaluate. Same thing with this side. Probably get a better idea looking at it from outside. There are many times when we just cannot see what's going on in a wall. Uh, drilling a hole and looking with a flashlight is one way to do it, but thermography is a much better way. On the outside of the building, if conditions are right, we should be able to see where areas are insulated, such as this porch ceiling and uh, it's a heated space on the other side, kind of an odd configuration. Some of the areas on a complex building can be very challenging to look at. Uh, you need good conditions, you need some experience, and you have to adjust the camera properly. Here we can see air leakage coming in under the door. The house is under uh, induced negative pressure right now using the blower door. These finger-like cold areas are very characteristic of what you'd see with air leakage. We're seeing holes that the contractor has drilled in the uh, interior walls preparatory to uh, blowing insulation in them. And above that we can see that there is air moving into the uh, floor system as well. With the blower door on and we're pulling cold air into the ceiling cavity so we can see the uh, dark areas of air infiltrating there and as we move across we can even see the framing of the floor system a lot of air moving into that system we're not sure exactly where but we can see it we can deal with it and check it after it's been fixed this is a classic example of how using the blower door and the infrared together just works like magic to be able to see these kinds of issues and here again is another great example of using the blower door and infrared to find this area of infiltration. This tiny cap in the ceiling and connect it up by following along to where it's connected to the outside wall. This would be almost impossible to do with any, without the uh, infrared and the blower door together. At least it would be a lot of work. We can see again some air leakage along the bottom of this door and the floor. As we move up to the top, again, we're seeing where they prepared it to be blown from inside. And it appears that they've missed one area, uh, or there may be some air leakage into that cavity. Uh, it, again, one of these cases where it's hard to tell exactly what's going on, we may have to do some further investigation. There's definitely some cold air moving in through the uh, interior wall in this case probably either from the attic or the banjoist or somewhere else. Not sure exactly where, but we'll track it down. But it's a lot of air. See the cold spot up on the ceiling? It's a very complex part of this building. We'll have to do some investigation. There's two bays over there that are empty and they're, they're not full width bays, so it's pretty understandable why they got missed uh, if they weren't doing some careful probing. So we have the blower door on, uh, running on depressurizing the building, and we're trying to see how the insulation's doing. It doesn't look so good up here. Uh, this is a very complex structure. It's been renovated uh, a number of times, and uh, we're just seeing the result of that. Lots of air leakage, lots of missing areas. There's a reflection of uh, somebody working. And we're seeing here uh, in the knee wall area a uh, whole section that's just plain void. There's a better view of it. 
the knee wall has voids in it as well as the dark uh, gray area is air leakage. And it turns out this was the area that's connected to the ceiling that we just looked at previously down below. I've trained people now for almost 30 years to use these. They're still pretty simple to use. This particular model, and I'm not, not endorsing any model, but all of them require you to focus in some way. To adjust basically the brightness and contrast on the image. And if you don't do that, you're not going to see anything. Many of them have the capability of basically going into what I would call an automatic mode. So let me just show you that. And I am, I've now adjusted this image basically automatically. Even though it says manual up here on this particular model, when I hit the F3 button, I adjust it automatically. Because I have a fa fairly hot window here and a cold sky here, it automatically builds the image contrast around those two extremes. And so we have an image where what we really want to look at is kind of lost in the middle of our span. There's two tricks I can do. One is I can look down here and again hit my F3 button and adjust it. And it's a little bit better. Really what I need to do in this case is to go into the manual mode. And all imagers have this ability. And I'm going to decrease my span. I just hold it down and look at I'm getting much more contrast out of the image now. I've lost detail in the windows. Those have turned saturated. I've lost the sky. Those have fallen off the bottom of the scale. But I've got tremendous detail in terms of the insulation itself. So that's what you want to do is almost always adjust your level and span manually. And what you can see now is that I have uh, Looks like just about a 9 degree span, 32 to 41 degrees, uh, in order to, to see that image. This is also a nice uh, camera. Not all imagers have this capability, but with this one I can just quickly unscrew the lens. That was a wide angle lens we were using. Um, th there are many, again, many models in the market now that have a wide angle lens. Uh, and when I go back to a normal view. There we go. Now we have more detail. We can't see the whole wall at once, but we definitely have more detail. Um, there are some imagers on the market that are less sensitive, and that's one of the things that you probably want to stay away from. You need a fairly sensitive camera one that has a response of what we we'd call about 100 millikelvin or better. And a, better would be a smaller number. This is a 50 millikelvin camera, very sensitive and can see <coughs> these fine temperature differences that we want. Um, there are also <coughs> cameras on the market that have less, fewer pixels on them. Um, again, you want nothing smaller than 120 by 120 pixels in the detector array. Otherwise, you just don't have the detail you need to look at buildings like this. So those are two important characteristics that if you're going to buy a camera for your agency, I would suggest you really consider seriously. I don't sell cameras. I'm only interested in your knowing how to use these. And it doesn't take much. It's not rocket science. You need to understand how the building works and you need to understand how the tool works, and then you got to get some time in using them. It's that time that really gives you the confidence and expertise to be able to understand what you're seeing and what you're not seeing, because I don't always see it all. Well, that's it for another episode of WXTV. What John really hammered home for me is that IR is not just for finding air leaks and missing insulation, it allows you to actually see how interconnected a building is and to locate problems that no other technology would allow. So if you haven't been using one regularly, pick up an IR camera and bring it to your next job. And thanks for watching. WXTV, your online source for weatherization information, techniques, and expert advice.